It feels as though I'm calling on the spirits of those women and girls that have passed or have been murdered, and they're there watching over me and helping me fight. In rural northern Wisconsin, on the Menominee Indian Reservation, Ayana Okimosh is training for her next boxing title. I told her the first year, I was a nervous wreck every time there was a fight. But she's not just fighting for another national championship win. She's fighting to raise awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women. I wanted to put that out with my boxing and fight for those women and girls who can't fight for themselves or make their voices heard. It's a long-standing epidemic that Indigenous women are facing, not just in Wisconsin, but across the U.S. Anywhere you find colonization, you'll find trafficking and murder of the Indigenous women. I feel pumped, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to get in the ring, fight. 12-year-old Ayana started boxing nearly three years ago. She's already won two national championship competitions and is currently ranked number one in her weight category in the U.S. It takes a lot of determination and hard work, but if you put that in, you're full 100%, you're gonna do great. When she started her boxing journey, Ayana's family was reluctant to let her go into the ring. I avoided it for, I, I would say, probably two to three months. I was scared, you know, to begin with. And to tell you the truth, I honestly thought she was going to come in here and get punched in the face and it was going to be over. The first thing I said is because of Ayana's personality, she comes and she's so huggy. And I don't know if she's going to have that temperament to go out there and actually be a good boxer. And, well, uh, to make the story a little shorter, she proved me wrong. As a former boxer, Ayana's grandpa has passed down his knowledge to her. My grandpa and his brothers, like, helped me a lot with learning different techniques. Everyone has different styles of boxing, so they helped me learn more about that, especially my grandpa. Even the pandemic couldn't dampen her enthusiasm. COVID came around and we were basically in here one day training and the next day we were told we had to close. Ayana wanted to continue training, there was no stopping it. Ayana is a descendant of the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin. The tribal lands encompass Menominee County, a 358 square mile area with a population of around 4,500. Over a quarter of the residents here live in poverty. For many kids, the Menominee Indian Boxing Club, where Ayana normally trains, is more than just a gym. A lot of kids come from homes where they don't have uh, two parents, one parent, or you know, grandpa, uh, or even kids that don't even have a home are just bouncing all over the place. So this pretty much gives them a chance to stay grounded. For Ayana, boxing is also about changing the fate of many women in her community. It's very empowering to know when I get in that ring that I'm fighting for not just my community, but all of the indigenous women around. She uses her platform to raise awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women. She regularly posts information about missing women on her social media sites and helps raise money to support charities tackling the MMIW epidemic. It's important for her to learn about some of the ways in which people are impacted by the MMIW epidemic. The issue of disappearing women is close to home. We have a family member who went missing in June, uh, Caitlin Kelly. Her mom and I are first cousins. In the beginning, I don't think it really registered with Ayana until I said, you know, she's a family member. Her mom and, and me, we, you know, we used to hang out and at my grandma's house when we were younger. And that's her daughter, that's your cousin. And you know, just one night, she's missing. No one can find her. Caitlin is one of hundreds of Indigenous women to go missing across the U.S. With this upcoming tournament, I know that I'm fighting for her and all the other girls that are missing or have been murdered in our community. In the last year, 53 cases of missing American Indian or Alaska Native women have been uploaded to the Missing Persons database. They make up more than 5% of the cases of missing women across the U.S., even though Indigenous women represent less than 1% of the country's population. It's a statistic Ayana's parents are all too aware of. It worries me all the time, because even though she is training to defend herself in the ring, 
that's not a 100 proof that nothing will ever happen to her and that she will always be able to protect herself. I'm very protective over my children. Uh, they're not allowed to stay at people's homes, even pre-COVID. As a parent, I can't, I can't chance that. You know, and I, I could never forgive myself if something did happen to, to one of them. Across the U.S., more than 84% of American Indian and Alaska Native women have experienced violence in their lifetimes. And research shows that 97% of victims face non-Native perpetrators. That leads to difficulties when trying to prosecute offenders. There was um, th this decision called the Oliphant decision which greatly affected tribal sovereignty and the ability to prosecute non-natives on indigenous land. So if we have a non-native person come onto tribal land and there's a murder and the murder is on tribal land, we're not able to prosecute in many tribes. At the end of 2019, there were 563 active missing person records of indigenous women. Reports suggest the numbers recorded are likely an undercount. There are a number of reasons for this, including underreporting and poor relations between the police and the community. And Indigenous women going missing is not a new issue. So it's a 500-year-old plus problem since first contact and colonization when we had trafficking of Indigenous women and young girls. And it's through government policy and attacks on our tribal sovereignty that leave us really extremely vulnerable and targeted by human traffickers. Kristen Welch is a community organizer with the local indigenous group Many Konakem. What we're really trying to do is just provide connection to our original identity to create wellness in our community. Anywhere you find colonization, you'll find trafficking and murder of the indigenous women. It removes the next generation, and indigenous women carry, you know, not only the physical generation, but a lot of that knowledge is passed on to our children. In Wisconsin, Kristen is seeing some progress toward more cohesion in tackling the issue. The Attorney General announced a task force between the Department of Justice and indigenous communities to tackle the issue of MMIW. It's really important for people to ask the indigenous people, the original people of the United States, what that true history is. Because in the books, that's written by the winners. I hope that there's more young women coming up like Ayana who can value themselves and love themselves in such a way that that power just emits out of them. Like that's part of the cohort's work is to raise up those future warriors. Ayana is gearing up for the USA Boxing National Championships in December. She's training every day in the boxing gym or at home with her dad. I'm backing her 100%. I'll get you to the tournaments. I don't care if, if we're broke. We'll make it happen one way or another. For Ayana, it's always been about protecting herself as well as her community. With my boxing, I know that if anything ever happens to me, I have a chance to defend myself. And I want to teach my kids and future generations to defend themselves so they don't end up being those statistics 